guys. I'm so happy to be here with you. I know we're not here with you physically, but we are here with you virtually, and that is good enough right now. Take this moment while you're watching, like, share, post about this uh, live stream right now. We want to get this around to, to everyone we can. So go ahead and like and share. Also want to remind you guys that we are having another Zoom call tonight, just like we did last week. I know it was a little chaotic and a little loud, but we just wanted to see your beautiful faces again. We want to see you as much as possible through this whole thing that we are going through right now. So again, a reminder, um, I don't know if it's the same link, but we are going to send you the link to the Zoom room that you have to go to. So. Also, I wanted to remind you, uh, if you make TikToks and you have a funny one, send them our way. We want to post them on our page. Um, go ahead and follow us on TikTok, uh, like our TikToks, follow us on Instagram, and we also have a Facebook. So after this is over, go follow all of our social medias. Again, uh, go ahead and share our live stream, like it, send it to every person you know before we move on. Well. That is it, and I am going to go ahead and switch us over, and we are going to do our game. All right, what's up, guys? We have our three contestants. Everybody say hello to Justin. Hey there. Shelby and Kaylee. So the name of the game is Baby Food. You are going to have a jar of baby food in front of you. Wow. Your goal is to taste that baby food and figure out what flavor that is. Do you think you can do that? Yes, I can. Are I you can, grossed out? I can rock that, yes. All right. Here we go. All right, and here we are. Here is round uno. Oh. Enjoy. Looks so, so gross. gross. It already looks like I'm the just, inside of my stomach. I'm just gonna pretend like it's gravy. It's just gravy, that's all it is. It's just a spoonful of gravy. Shelby and Kaylee. Shelby and Kaylee, but Justin, before you start deciding, go ahead and take a, take a, take a bite. The ladies first. You waited too long. Wow. I think that's, I know what it is, but so I know what I'll it have is. Just a little okay, don't more. say it yet. Don't say the <laughs> don't say the flavor yet. Justin seems like he's enjoying himself. Alright, so on the count of three, you're all gonna say what flavor you think it is. Okay? One, two, three. Banana, Banana. nut bread. Banana bread. Banana nut bread. Yep. It was, just just banana. Banana. it was just banana. It was just banana. It was just banana. This is baby food. This I'm, isn't a gourmet well, cooking just, show. I'm just saying. I was like, I cooked this like two weeks ago. Here we are. Numero dos. Don't spin it around because the label's still on there. <laughs> it looks just like Enjoy. the last one. Well, I got fussed at for going first last time, so ladies. How about we all dip our spoon in and then we'll take a bite at the same time? Kaylee like went a little wow. weak on that. That is weak. I think you have to at least get like a good little dollop. A dollop will do ya. Wow. <laughs> Ooh. No, see. Yeah. It doesn't smell that bad. I think it's got some fruit in there. So we are we ready? Oh, I know what this is. Are we ready? Already? Yep, I'm ready. All right. All right. One. Oh, should we count it down? Two, three. That's not bad. It's not bad. All right. Think about the flavor. Think about it. Okay. Are you ready? Okay, this one's a little bit more complex. So we're gonna go like one at a time with what flavor you think it is. Justin? You ready? Yeah. Strawberry, banana, and blueberry. <laughs> Just for future reference, anything that ever has blueberries in it is blue. In two ways. <laughs> That's not true at all. I mean, it is. I think um, banana definitely because it's the same color as the last. Um, I'm thinking there's probably something tropical, like some pineapple maybe. So oh. maybe like a banana pineapple yeah. type of deal. Good point, good point. I think it's pineapple and mango. Okay. Mm. All right, so good combo. Justin, you got one point on that round. Oh. Shelby, you got two points. Kaylee, you got one point. It was banana, orange, and pineapple. Mm. Oh. oh, wow. So oh, far, so good. Seconds. These are great. Isn't orange the same thing as makeup? No. No, they're not. 
Corey, you got that wow. re recorded, right? <laughs> Don't forget, that's in there. All right, here we go. Round Ooh. three. Oh, I saw the color, man. Shoot. I'll take that one Whoa. from you. And enjoy. Smell it. Um, uh, it's a little watery. Do we drink this one? Like just a... These poor babies. Mm. Just wash that. Just wash that. I already right. know what it is. I don't even have to taste it. Are you ready to dip our spoons? <laughs> Whoa, I got some of the edge and it was a little bit. Oh. It was a oh, little bit crusty. Bit crusty. Oh, Whoa. Ooh. I got a big I know what it is. I know what it is. I don't Kaylee, even have to eat that's it. not enough. Okay. <laughs> One, two, three. Y'all, I don't know if I can do it. Whoa. I'm gonna throw up. You Whoa. better take that bite. Oh my gosh. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I know what that is, and that's a terrible representation of what that is supposed to be. <laughs> mm. All right. Are you ready I to guess? In three, two, one. Sweet potato. Yeah, sweet potato. Oh, I was going to say squash. <sighs> It is squash. Actually, oh. it is winter squash. Winter squash. Cool. Mm. I tasted like some pumpkin That's in there. That's an insult to winter. Yes. <laughs> that is. All right. No, my savory should not be. Here we are. I'm going for my side. Whoa. <laughs> Whoa. Dude, sorry. Okay. Oh. Enjoy. <laughs> that one's definitely got peas in it. Oh, I hate peas. Oh. <laughs> <sighs> Guys, alive. I might be in the minority on this, but I like pizza. Y'all see that spoonful? Bon appetit. That's a man spoonful right there. Whoa! Oh my <laughs> God! I can't do it, y'all. I can't do it. I can't oh. do it. Do, Don't do we need a spit it before bucket? you eat it. Just so y'all know, a trash can has been brought in. All right, no. go ahead and take your bite. Whoa! Shoot! Oh my gosh. Oh. Did you snort? <laughs> that is so nasty. I have no clue what that is, but it's disgusting. All right. Is it complex? We're gonna. Oh my grace. Not as complex so as the second the one, babies. but I will give you a hint because it is kind of tough. There are two different flavors. There are two different flavors. I need a guess in three, two, one. Peas. Uh, peas and cucumbers. I don't know. And cucumbers. <laughs> peas and cucumbers. It's something green. Okay, none of you got a point. Really? No peas? Pears and kale. Pears and kale. <laughs> oh. That's worse than peas That's and awful. Cucumbers. I love pears and I don't like that. All right, here we are <laughs> with the next one. That one's less intimidating. Less intimidating looking right there, I would say. It looks like dirt. <laughs> I'm hoping for pumpkin. Y'all, y'all, just so you know. Okay. Kaylee is disgusted. <laughs> She's borderline like mad. <laughs> Cause these are so nasty. Oh, here we go. Oh, this one's thick. Woo! That... Thick. Oh. <laughs> wow. Thick. Oh, that one don't smell so bad. It's pumpkin. Pumpkin. I'm thinking pumpkin. Yeah, yeah it's pumpkin. All right, one, two, three, bottoms up. Whoa. Oh. <laughs> a a dry piece of pumpkin. Mm -hmm. They just took a spoon and carved it, the, the skin <laughs> of the pumpkin, and just put a dollop of water in there. Eh, that's good. All right, wow. I'm going to need a guess. I'll give you another hint. It is two different flavors. Yeah, I got you on this one. I'm good. Do you? I, I figure it. I figure it. All right. Wait, Justin wait. seems very confident, so we're going to let him go last with his answer. Um, so, okay, okay. Kaylee, give us your answer. A pumpkin and peach. <laughs> okay. Shelby? I'm going to say sweet potato. Sweet potato. I'm going to say pumpkin and squash. All right. Oh, I should have said pumpkin Pumpkins squash. are squash. And, and just regular old yellow squash. All right. The more you know. Pumpkin the flavors, squash. sweet potato 
and chicken. Bruh. What? No. No, there's not chicken in there. There's no way there was chicken in there. There's not chicken in there. Last time you did that, I could still see the back of the ingredients. I mean, Okay, I'll try. I'll just, yeah, just don't cheat. That's what he's asking I, you to do. Literally, he it's told me it wasn't cheat. on the back, and then I literally looked he, at the back, and it was there. So asking okay. you not to cheat. <laughs> oh, whoa! <laughs> Ding! <laughs> yeah. All right, this is the last round. Don't look at the bottle because okay. I couldn't take it off. I'm sorry. There's carrots in. Enjoy. Oh, oh, oh! She thick. She thick. Carrots. All right, go ahead and take a bite. <laughs> oh I don't God. hate it. I don't like the texture of that one. The texture's bad. Mm, that one reminds me of pumpkin pie. That's why I don't like pumpkin pie. That one's pumpkin. There's some pumpkin in that one for sure. For sure. That one okay. was thick. I like her. All right, Shelby, <laughs> go ahead and give us your guess on the flavors. Definitely pumpkin. And I don't know, pumpkin. Kaylee? Pumpkin and sweet potato. Justin? I'm gonna go uh, with a little bit of wild card here. And I'm gonna say <laughs> uh, pumpkin and apple. Hmm. I kinda changed it. All right. Yeah, I'm, um, yeah. So, there is no pumpkin. Oh. It's literally called just sweet potato and barley. And barley? What the heck is barley? Who eats, who puts barley in sweet potato? If we had to choose favorites, what would your favorite be? The first one. Banana? Yeah, yeah I would banana say nut bread. Yeah. That's not banana nut bread. It was banana nut bread, baby. <laughs> um, it was banana nut bread. It was banana nut bread. Convinced. Mm -hmm. We My both favorite. said banana nut bread, so there was some nut bread yeah. in there. Mine was the second banana orange pineapple. All right, so we welcome to week two of Happy Easter. I am, I'm so happy about that game that we just played. Feeding them baby food was absolutely so much fun. I loved watching them eat it. The smell of it was horrible. I'm sure they tasted bad, but clap for those people because they are absolute troopers for playing that game. Two of my favorite things about Easter. Number one, food, not baby food. Real food, human adult food. Every year on Easter, uh, we would, after Sunday church, we would go to my Aunt Margie's house in uh, South Carolina and we would have a big old meal prepared for us. Every year we got there and our whole family was there. We played dodgeball in the front yard. It was so much fun. I love it. I love Easter dinner. My second thing about Easter that I love and is my favorite is candy. There's candy everywhere. If we start to think about what Easter looks like as a holiday, it's quite different from any other holiday than we have. It's kind of similar to Halloween, but Halloween we, we dress up in these scary monster-like costumes and uh, scary things, and we walk around neighborhoods and we go trick-or-treating for candy, and we go get the candy, right? But for Easter, we dress up in fancy clothes. We dress to the nines or our Sunday best, whatever you want to call it. And a big, scary, creepy looking Easter bunny brings our candy to our house instead of us going out. Easter is quite different than any other holiday that we have. It's still awesome. All the festivities, the egg hunts, the candy and fluffy animals makes it a pretty fun and lighthearted holiday. We know we're supposed to be happy about Easter, but it doesn't always feel like a lighthearted, happy holiday when we talk about it at church. After we get past the fancy clothes, the candy, the egg hunts, we learn about the details that surround the original Easter story. It's about a cross, murder, blood, torture, death, sin, and a grave. We talk about some pretty dark stuff. And then we close it out with, Happy Easter, see you next week. Which can make us wonder, is Easter really a happy holiday? Last week, we began talking about the reality of Easter and why we consider it a holiday, a time to celebrate. And one of the reasons many people feel it's worth celebrating is Easter is part of God forgiving us for our sins. 
The whole story is pretty tough to hear. Jesus' suffering on the cross is a picture of just how devastating sin can be. His death and resurrection showed us not only his love for us, but his power over sin and death. That's why Easter is a good thing. Maybe for you, the word sin is a kind of weird, churchy, not fun term that clashes with the whole Easter happy holiday thing. Or maybe you aren't even clear on what the word means. After all, lots of people disagree about what sin is and what sin isn't and why that even matters. So for today, let's agree on one thing. When we say sin, what we mean is anything less than what God says is best. Things like lying, cheating, stealing, he- hating, and not seeing ourselves or others the way that God does. All that is sin. But can we just stop for a second and consider how it all got to this point? Is sin really that big of a deal? Like murder. Sure, bad, that's a huge deal. But lying or cheating on a test or using somebody else's Netflix password, is that all the same, like die on a cross, big deal? It kind of seems a little extreme. Paul was the author of most of the books of the New Testament. In a letter he wrote to Christians in ancient Rome, he talked about the effects of sin. For the wages of sin is death. Well, this isn't exactly the happy Easter vibe we're looking for, is it? But it does show us why God seems to care so much about our sin. Sin is a big deal to God because it brings death. I get that that sounds a little extreme. Just think about it for a second. You gossip about a friend behind their back and they find out and it kills your friendship with them. You cheat on a test, your teacher finds out, you wind up failing that class or that test and then your goal for a good grade dies or you lie to your parents and the trust that they have in you seems to die as part of the punishment sin always brings death to something I think so often we think God says to stay away from that stuff because he's just mean like that or he's just controlling like that in reality So often God says, don't do that because whatever that is has incredible power to bring pain or even death into our lives. And sin doesn't just bring death to something. It also brings death to someone. If we are constantly wrapped up in sin, our lives begin to head in a direction that tears us apart from the inside out. We feel distant from God. We lose hope for a better day and the consequences of our actions with us. Before we know it, we wind up in a place in life that we never intended to be. It's like there are parts of us and who we are created by God to be that are dying. Something is missing in our souls. And maybe the worst part of all of it, even when we know sin hurts us, we can't stop. We're not stupid or or dumb or hard-headed. It's just that sin can feel so powerful, no matter what kind of sin it is, the more we do it, the more we get hurt, and the more we believe that we don't have the power to stop. The apostle Paul talked about it using these words. He says, the wages of sin is death. Wages is just another word for paycheck. It means what you get in return. And what we get in return for our sin is death. It was death of who God created us to be. How we were intended to live and the relationship God wanted to have with us. But then Jesus came, lived a life without sin, and was put to death. He didn't deserve death. No, he had no sin, but he took the wages that we earned or the death that we earned. Take a look at how Paul finishes his statement. He says, for the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life through Christ Jesus our Lord. This is what makes Easter so happy. All the talk of blood, suffering, and the cross isn't the end of the story. The Easter story isn't about death. It's about life. 
Yes, Jesus did die because of sin. And his death shows us how sin can kill us physically and spiritually. But the more important part is he didn't stay dead. Three days later, Jesus got up fully alive. He wasn't a ghost. He wasn't a spirit. He was the resurrected, once literally dead, but now literally alive Jesus. In that moment, Jesus proved everything he ever said about himself, about God, about us, and about how much he loves us. What we couldn't do for ourselves, he did for us. He broke the power of sin. He overcame the death that our sins earned and he gave us life in return. Easter means new life is possible. When the resurrection happened, Jesus showed us that instead of living in the hopelessness of sin, because of him, we can have a great start, a great fresh start. He can not only forgive us of all that we've done wrong, but he can give us a new life full of hope. What's amazing about this is when you have a relationship with God, he begins the work of raising dead things back to life. He can bring relationships, your self-worth, your dreams, your sense of purpose, your joy back to life. The parts of us that have been killed by sin, God can bring them back to life, but it's a process. As he gives us the power to live like him, our life begins to look less and less like who we used to be and more and more like the new life that he wants for us. Easter means new life is possible because we can have a relationship with God and he can start something new in us. So the question is, what's one area of your life that you need new life? All of us might answer that question a little bit differently. For some of you, this may be the first time you've really understood what is, what is Easter about? Maybe you've celebrated it by decorating eggs and eating candy, but you've never understood why we celebrate or what that means for you personally. And when you hear about the new gift of life, you realize it's exactly what you need. You realize that you've been going in a different direction than what God says is best. You even see the things in your life that are dying because of it. If that's you, maybe it's time for you to trade your life for his life. Jesus dying on the cross was God moving towards your life, getting into your sin and paying the price for it. The cross is Jesus dying your death for you. And the resurrection is about him defeating it. When you put the trust of your life and the belief of your heart in the person of Jesus and what he did for you through the cross and resurrection, you receive new life. You receive his life. Some of you have already made this decision to follow Jesus. But the reality is you may have some areas where sin is killing some of the best parts of your life. No matter how life feels right now, you can be confident that our sin will never take away the new life that God offers you. No sin, nor angel, nor demon, nor anything can separate us from God and the love that he gives us and the grace that he gives us and the new life that he gives us. All we have to do is accept it from him. All we have to do is ask him for that new life and he gives it to us freely. You see, he died so that we could have new life, but not just have it, have it full and have it abundantly and have it for free for him, from him, because it is him. Yes, your choices come with consequences, but they don't disqualify you. Just know you have the power to make a choice. You can start living out the new life Jesus gives you. 
Maybe today is time for you to ask God to bring new life into a broken part of your life. And if that's you right now, whether you are a believer, or whether it's your first time, or whether you're just now saying, I need to give my life to Christ, right now, in the comments of this video, or in the Zoom call that we're going to do after this video, please talk to me. Talk to Justin, Shelby, your parents, Kaylee, somebody. Share with somebody the good news of what Jesus is doing in your life. Ask God for his resurrection power in a part of your life that feels like it's hurting you. If there are any decisions that you made tonight, I encourage and invite you to share it with someone, just like any other big decision in life. The decision to follow Jesus is one you probably need to talk through with a leader, a parent, or a trusted friend. Plus, it's great for us and, and people to celebrate new life happening in you. So if that is you tonight, if you want that new life or you are accepting that new life or asking Jesus to come in and give you that new life, please share that with us either in the comments of this video so that we can celebrate as a whole or in the Zoom call afterwards or in a text message privately or with your parents at home, whoever it is. Share it with a parent, a leader, or a trusted friend so that we can celebrate and walk through this new life that is coming into you directly from God with you and every step of the way. Jesus didn't die for nothing. Jesus didn't just get up on a cross and die just to die on a cross. He died for me and for you. He died so that we could have this new, fresh life for free. All we have to do is accept it. Man, what an incredible message Corey just delivered. I pray that that message speaks to you guys in one way or another, whether it's tonight in the situation you're in currently or whether it's in the future. I just pray God uses that message to touch your life and to touch the lives around you. Don't forget, we're jumping on a Zoom call right now, so you need to be in that room. If you didn't get us a link, send us a DM and we will get it to you right away. Love you guys. Hope you have a great rest of the week.